Hey everybody, Brian with Buffalo Beer Review, back with another brew day, home brew day. Uh, fresh off of one of the longest work weeks I've ever done. Um, and I've got a week of vacation. So I did a little bit of research uh, as to, you know, what an oat cream is, kind of the similarities between all of the recipes. Um, and I kind of came up with a little bit of a, of a recipe to try to see if I could do an oat cream uh, brew day. Um, this is gonna be good. Uh, basically, oat cream, it looks like an IPA, <clears throat> excuse me, with the addition of some uh, lactose, uh, AKA milk sugar, uh, a pound of it at about uh, 10 minutes left in the boil. Um, and then typical uh, um, late hop additions. Um, there's a whirlpool stand addition and a dry hopping schedule. Um, I mean, and it sounds pretty okay to me. Um, and then it's got, um, what else does it have? Whirlpooling, it's got some cryo hops. So uh, for the dry hopping, which I thought was cool, kind of maybe reduce some of the, the hop volume in the troop and stuff like that. Uh, this brew day is special because uh, I did recently get a mill in uh, the mail. I thought I was gonna have to maybe potentially um, say like double mill my uh, my malts, but they seem to be really well uh, milled and I don't wanna take the chance of, of milling them too finely and, and running the risk of like a stuck uh, mash and stuff like that. But I also got a pH meter that I've been really um, wanting to get uh, and you know test out the the water treatments and stuff like that to maybe increase my efficiency and stuff like that so I tested my pH before I'm running at like 8.6 uh, pH uh, I did some initial uh, calcium chloride and gypsum additions per the six gallons that I'm boiling um, and that's kind of getting the water set so that when I put my nine pounds of uh, pale two row in, um, you know, that's gonna drop the, uh, the pH considerably. I'll recheck the uh, pH and I, after about 15 minutes and then I will uh, do the adjustments from there. Um, from what I've been kind of researching and looking up online, that seems to be a really easy sort of way of um, increasing your efficiency and really um, making enjoyable product uh, uh, at the end of your brew day and your fermentation cycle. So, uh, I mean, that's about it. You can kind of see the, uh, um, the ingredients I got lined up, my coffee, my brew kettle. We're gonna mash in at 163, we're at 156. Yeah, should be fun. I'll pick back up when we're doing in. All right, we're moving along really nicely on our oat cream IPA brew day. Uh, let me take the top off here. I doughed in about 15 minutes ago. Um, I've been really kind of trying to utilize the suggestions from this Beersmith app. Um, so I usually do about maybe nine degrees uh, strike water difference from what my mash in temperature is. Uh, this, this called for like an 11 degree difference. So I set it at 163 on the brew kettle. Um, I doughed in and boom, it was 152 on the dot. It was like 151.9. It rose uh, ever so slightly to 152.3. Perfect. Um, and I'm going to take my initial pH reading. Let's see. Here it is. I don't know if you can read it very well. It's, it's coming up. We want between 5.4 and 5.6. And I'm at 5.4, 5.41. Climbing ever so slightly, 5.41. Which is great. Um, the Beersmith, oh, I'm sorry. I got an easy water calculator from WNY Brews. Um, it was great. Uh, I'll see if I can't affix the, the link down below. Um, so for my 6.25 gallons of, of water that I was boiling, I added six grams of calcium chloride and I 
added six grams of gypsum into my uh, boil water and it's got a little calculator where you can add your malt so I added uh, I put into the spreadsheet nine pounds of two row and it kind of calculated what my estimated pH was going to be uh, with that calcium chloride in the in the gypsum amounts and it was almost spot on um, that really makes me happy I know that going forward with this brew that that pH is accurate my temperatures are accurate and hopefully that will give me a couple more notches up in the brew house efficiency arena do you know what I mean this is really what we're dealing with um, we're all mashed in I got um, almost an entire pound of rice hulls to help me with the uh, with the mash um, I've been just kind of this system I have uh, I do like a manual sort of recirculation you know out from the um, spout and back up top just to kind of keep everything um, the temperatures accurate and stuff like that but that's really about it I mean I've got a, another 45 minutes um, I'm getting my sparge water um, heated up on the stove and that's also something that uh, they recommend you um, water treating you know what I mean so I got a, a gallon and a half so I may do uh, some water uh, additions some calcium chloride water additions uh, to my sparge water just to keep everything kosher and kind of on the same playing field um, and then uh, that's it so far I've, I've been extremely happy I'm looking forward to seeing this uh, oat cream IPA at the end of the day so I'll pick back up in a little bit all right guys uh, so our sparge is completed um, you know if you uh, use rice hulls or if you haven't and you're thinking about it rice hulls really do make your sparging and your mash consistency really nice you know um, you could almost tell from you know you could hear how quickly it was uh, draining out of the screen bottom here that it was a nice vigorous um, sort of sparge or more vigorous than before it was really nice so I was able to uh, sparge in we've got about 6.25 gallons which you know with your evaporation loss and um, kind of lost to your troop and the dry hopping and your yeast and stuff like that so we should get somewhere around the five gallon mark when we um rack it from the fermenter into the keg so we're coming up on 196 degrees probably more like 198 200 by the time i um stir it around it's just one of those little things if you don't have a recirculation pump those are the sort of things that you've got to kind of get used to doing on your own. I've got the recipe here. So basically what we're going to be doing is we'll bring it up to a boil. I've got a half ounce citra addition at 30 minutes. Uh, then I've got the one and a half ounce of citra addition along with the um, lactose at 10 minutes. Um, and then we have a uh, whirlpool at uh doesn't say i think it's 170 degrees for 30 minutes and that's where our uh you cannot and our idaho seven additions come in those are some hefty additions two ounces of each which is pretty cool so um from the the look and the color and the uh, of the wort uh, it looks awesome I'm hoping that it stays just that way um, I'm using a different type of, of yeast that I'm used to using it's like a spe it's like white labs special haze uh, yeast I had to actually special order it from my home brew shop so I'm actually looking forward to that so this brew is all sorts of new techniques for me so uh, pH meter um, I have been doing some of the water additions before, but nothing backed up and solidified with an actual pH reading. So pH meter, I've got the grain mill on, in which I didn't actually use. I'm using the, the, uh, the Beersmith uh, recommendations for um, kind of water volumes. 
Uh, I'm using the special haze yeast. I'm using Idaho, Idaho 7 hops. I haven't used those yet. I haven't used Falconer's Flight yet either. Um, what else, what else, what else? I'm whirlpooling. I've only done a whirlpool maybe two or three other times. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and the lactose. Uh, that's another one I haven't used before. Everything just seems to be really cool. Um, and it's going according to plan, which is even more fun. And um, yeah, maybe I'll pick back up when we are um, done with the cooling and we're gonna start uh, putting it into our fermenter with the yeast. So we are uh, done with the boil. We are doing our Whirlpool hop stand. Uh, it didn't really tell me exactly what the, uh, the, the temperature range should be, but I'm, I'm going with about 168 degrees hop stand for 30 minutes. Two ounces of Yukona and two ounces of Idaho 7. Um, I was thinking of switching that out possibly with Falconer's Flight, um, but I, have, I actually did get the Idaho 7. So it's not bad. Um, you kind of see nice little, I, I only used uh, Irish moss. I did not use any Werflock. I want the, I want the hot, uh, the haze and the cloudiness. Um, I only used a little bit of Irish moss to kind of help, you know, take any sort of, of nastiness out of the wort. Um, and some yeast nutrient. Um, the hops are, are doing nicely. I've got my, uh, the system down. It's just perfectly. Let me see if I can get the temperature probe in there. See what we're at. It was just 168 just a couple of seconds ago. And 70 so it's gone up a little bit since the last time I kind of hit the the hose just to kind of bring it down just a hair you know that I feel like the hops really do um, that vegetal mass really does hold on to the heat a lot so but I don't think 170 out of a 168 target is is terrible uh, I've started to clean up that's all my that's my grist my old uh, uh, boil hop additions i've got my you know my uh star sand bucket ready to go i'll put my fermenter in there in a second i've got my uh grain basket uh cleaned and ready to go just kind of going cleaning as i go um i'm really excited I, I put the the lactose in at 10 minutes as well 10 minutes left in the boil i don't i've never used it before so i don't i don't know if the um if the word's supposed to look differently or or whatnot but uh or if it kind of you know uh kind of uh comes to uh you know comes out during fermentation or the finished product i don't know but uh i used an entire pound of it for this five gallon sort of system so uh, we'll see i mean that's the beauty of home brewing uh you know, if I don't like the Idaho 7, I'm going to use the Falconer's Flight next time. Um, I did end up buying two of these yeast packets just because they were special order. So, I mean, I'll probably end up using the same yeast profile next batch. Um, maybe increasing the, the number of ounces per uh, of lactose if I think it might need a little bump up. But I'm really excited about this so far. So, holy cow, guys. Um, we're just wrapping up brew day. Um, it seemed to have taken me just a hair under five hours total. That's set setting up and to the start of setup to the uh, end of cleanup, just under five hours. I don't think that's a bad clip at all, especially on a 110, sort of a 120, um, uh, electrical brew system. I don't think that's bad. Uh, so couple of things we have our um, gravity reading here our OG and it's right at about uh, 1062 which I mean um, according to Beersmith um, you know this is with whatever sort of uh, efficiencies punched into the to the application but uh, it says our estimated original gravity is 1085, measured original gravity 1046. So we came in way above the measured original gravity from Beersmith from 1046 to 1062. So I hope that translates into a really solid sort of ABV. 
the color I really dig the color um, it doesn't really have a whole lot of haze yet um, I'm looking forward to seeing what this sort of new yeast uh, lends to the finished product um, yeah I was really happy with our pH reading I was really happy with our water treatment I was really happy with hitting all of our temperatures I was happy with everything really um, our whirlpool our hop stand at 168 hit almost right on target uh, although I didn't really um, video that because there's not, it's not really exciting you know what I mean I didn't um, I didn't film you know racking into the fermenter it's just that's just not exciting stuff you know what I mean but uh, the numbers are good um, I've got a couple of beers uh, for the, the next couple of videos that I'm gonna uh, make um, I've made mosaic backsplash uh, once before this is the second batch um, that fermenting should be done in about three days so uh, look for that video to come up soon and honestly um, after this um, oat cream IPA is done fermenting and uh, and aging um, I'm gonna get this onto the channel to show you guys so I don't know if you guys are uh, interested in subscribing to the channel for uh, for more homebrew sort of adventures and uh, local Western New York and Buffalo beer reviews then uh, hit me up hit subscribe and uh, that would be much appreciated so I hope I hope you guys really liked uh, look into my brew day uh, I'm looking into making a more permanent setup for myself in my basement right now um, and that's that so I really appreciate all the clicks and the likes and all that other good stuff so I'll see you guys in the next one cheers